Today we're looking at the Seven Artisans Photoelectric 35mm f1.2 Mark II lens for Nikon Z. Now this is an APS-C crop sensor lens. Uh, it's on Fujifilm X, Canon EF, Sony E, Micro Four Thirds, and also for the Nikon Z mount. This lens has a multi-layer coating. They say they have a declicked aperture ring on here, and it has a minimum focusing distance of 11 inches. So right now we are looking at the lens, taking it out of the box, and you can see me holding it and messing with the aperture ring. And this is my first time looking at this, so let's see what I'm doing here. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the first things I noticed about this lens is that the markings on them are very similar to the Zeiss ZP2 markings. I think they took some inspiration from that in making this lens. And another thing I noticed was that the aperture ring is actually clicked. I don't know why they put that in their marketing, but when you turn the aperture ring, it has a click to it. It's a bit odd why they say it's declicked, but just know that it is not. It has a click when you turn it. The focus ring is nice and smooth. It has a good resistance to it, but I would also say that it is a little bit on the small end. Even though it's a small lens, it would have been nice to have a bigger focus ring because it is manual focus. Here's how it looks on the Nikon Z6, and it is small. By comparison to the 2470 f4 from Nikon, this lens is like a little bit of a pancake. You can almost take the whole camera and stick it in your pocket. And one other thing worth mentioning is the lens cap is friction based. It's not a screw on, it's not a click on. So when you put it on there, it, there, are, there were a couple times where it did fall off. Okay, so I took this lens with the Nikon Z6, and this is a full frame camera, but I switched it over to the DX mode, the APS-C crop mode. If you were fully wide open at FX mode, you see an image like this. So it's not usable in full frame mode, even if you tried, you need to put it down into the DX crop mode. Let's first talk about sharpness. Is this lens sharp at f1.2? And the answer is no, it is not sharp at f1.2. You don't get texture, you, you lose contrast in it, you get this bloomy, greasy effect to it. Um, there are some you know, situations where you could get away with that if you want a vintage look to it. So you know, here you get that blooming around the edge of the leaf. If you zoom in all the way on this photo here and go all the way in, uh, yes, there's some texture there, but it's not as sharp as it normally would be where you'd be stopped down. And I found that if you once you get to f2.8, you get a suitable sharpness performance if sharpness is your goal. So for example, if you were to look at this photo here, kind of in the midfield focus area, this leaf might look like it's in focus, but as soon as you switch over to f2.8, you get a lot more contrast and a lot more detail in those leaves. Same thing here. I already showed this photo, but this is at f1.2. You switch over to f2.8 and all that detail is there in that leaf that you don't get when you're at f1.2. So let's talk about bokeh. Does this lens have a nice bokeh? Well, for one, uh, it's subtle. The bokeh balls in the background don't have much contrast to them. Other lenses do. And you also get a lot of cat's eye effect to them. So for example here, there is a ton of oval effect on the edges of it. You really see the spherical shape of the lens. Some people might call that a swirly bokeh effect to it. And I didn't think it looked bad. It, it, it's a very unique look. I wouldn't use it on a paid job. You know, I'd rather use a much more neutral lens that doesn't have these characteristics to them. Let's take a look at a few more shots of that bokeh. So again here, you get that swirly effect to it, that three-dimensional sphere shape to it. You get the cat's eye in the corners. There's no onion skinny with the bokeh balls. They're actually sm pretty smooth and, and they don't stand out that much compared to some other lenses like the Contax line of lenses. Let's move on and talk about flare. The flare in this lens is bright purple. There is some rainbow to it, but the main thing you see when the sun hits this lens and sends off some light into the lens, you get that purple flare. So you get that rainbow streak and you get some purple on the frame, even some pink. And it's not that bad of a look, it's unique. You know, you could find some creative ways to use that. One thing I did notice when I was using this lens was that I got some weird flaring. So in this photo here, this was taken on the 24-70 f4 at f4. And I took the same exact photo with the 
uh, seven artisans 35 millimeter at f4 and i get all this purple flaring coming through the window i don't know what that is i don't know if it's the coating or if it's something about the lens but it does have a purple flaring thing with it take it as you will it's a 139 dollar lens uh, it's got a lot of pronounced purple flare to it as far as glare goes I'd say the glare is actually pretty well contained. Even if you're pointing at a really bright sky, uh, you don't lose that much contrast to it. And then the other thing to talk about is chromatic aberration. Does this lens have a lot of purple or cyan or anything uh, on the edges of really fine uh, detailed objects? And I'd say no, it's actually surprisingly well contained. Like this shot here of this leaf, there's a little bit of cyan going on here. And I'm a little okay with the sign and the purple and the edges of the leaves because this shot originally looked like this. And so what's typical when you take a photo of an object with a very bright background and very dark foreground is you get some of that purple fringing, the chromatic aberration effects in there when you increase the brightness. So going from here to here and only seeing that much in it, like I, that's pretty impressive. Moving on, let's get into some comparisons with this lens. I like using the Nikon 24-70 f4 lens because I find that to be a very neutral, balanced lens that doesn't have a lot of characteristics to it. It's very vanilla, you could say. And so by having that lens as a baseline and then having other lenses to look at them with, I can kind of see the differences and things you might not otherwise notice. So this shot here was taken on the Nikon. Now if you go to the corner here and look at the power lines, there's a good amount of sharpness on the power lines. There's no chromatic aberration. The trees are detailed all the way to go into the edge. But as soon as you switch over to the 35 millimeter, you find that the power lines lose a little bit of detail. There's no chromatic aberration still, but it has this blooming smeared look to it. Same thing on the trees here. The edge performance on this lens just isn't that good. Another example is this tree. This one here was taken on the Nikon, and this one here was taken on the Seven Artisans. Both lenses were at f4. So let's zoom in. Well, and while there is reasonable sharpness in this tree here, it becomes immediately apparent when you switch over to the Nikon that uh, it's not as sharp as the Nikon lens and the edge performance is a whole lot worse. So Nikon here, you get detail on this leaf, you switch over and everything kind of has this uh, shifted smear to it. Another example is when you look at the leaves down in this bottom corner, you get that smeared look to it. When you switch to the Nikon, things still have their shape, even though they're out of focus, they still represent what they are. And here's one final comparison photo. This here was taken on the Nikon at f4. And the one thing I want to draw attention to is the fence. When you're zoomed in on this fence here, you still get uh, the structure of the fence. But when you look at the seven artisans at, at f4, the structure of the fence is a little bit harder to distinguish. And it, as soon as you switch down to f1.2, the fence gets that bloom effect to it and I don't find that to be the most attractive look. The other thing to notice in this photo is that at f1.2 there's more vignetting than at f4. So just go back, going back and forth, you can see that change in the amount of vignetting on the lens. And there's a little purple up there. See that? is this a bad lens uh, if you're using it for corporate work or if you're using it for event work yes I would say it's not a very usable lens in those situations it's not sharp at f1.2 it's got some of that smearing that bloominess to it it's got cat's eye in the corners and it's got a very pronounced swirly bokeh to it but does that make it in itself a bad lens for $139 I don't think so this is actually a fun lens it's a lot of fun to use and to take some unique looking imperfect photos with them. If it were just a lens on itself that you were buying to use for work, it's not a very good lens and I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're just trying to get to f1.2 for the 35mm, have a take around, travel, pocketable, do everything kind of focal length lens, this would be a good and fun lens to take photos with. Thanks for coming and watching this video. If you made it this far, please leave a comment and let me know how I did. This is my second video. I hope to do more of these. I already have some coming down the pipeline from TT Artisan, Seven Artisans, Sirui, and uh, what's the other one? Dizio Film. Yeah, I have some cinema lenses coming down the lineup too. So if that's what you like, please subscribe. Also leave some comments, you know, 
Let's see questions. <laughs>